Hello everybody, here is a quick update about what is going on in Afghanistan. Um, for those of you who do not know, I just moved to Paris, I study Western security policy, all that other fun stuff. Um, but anyway, here is just a really quick recap in case you guys wanted somebody to just jump straight into it. So right now there's 4,500 US citizens that have so far been flown out of Afghanistan. I have my notes right here because I haven't set up all of my editing equipment, all that fun stuff thus far. On top of everything, there's 1.5 thousand Americans that still have to be flown out. Now on top of that, according to Anthony Blinken, now he's referring to the US State Department, uh, we have sent over 20,000 emails and 45,000 phone calls to try to get people out. You know, as a matter of fact, now that I think about it, going a little off script here, there's even times where uh, <laughs> we'll hear random stories like people from San Diego. There's like 20 people who somehow managed to get stranded in Afghanistan because they're visiting family members and now we don't know how to get them out. So something, just a little food for thought. Now on top of that, there's tens of thousands of Afghanis right now or people from Afghanistan. I don't know if Afghani, if that's a sensitive term, I don't think it is. But anyway, I digress. Tens of thousands of people from Afghanistan right now who still need to get out of Afghanistan and they qualify for refugee status. And I say something that's kind of not really talked about too much, but I think it is uniquely interesting. It is the fact that right now you have two different airports. You have one that's controlled by the Taliban and that is Karzai airport. And then you have the airport in Kabul. The airport in Kabul right now, according to Afghanis who are there, there, there's shots like warning shots getting shot from the United States soldiers as well as soldiers from Germany in the air trying to organize individuals. However, in the Karzai airport, it's the same thing. The Taliban are shooting shots up in the air. The one in Kabul also just got attacked by an unknown individual. There was an explosion. The Taliban says that they don't take any sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Street cred essentially for this and it's potentially the Islamic State. It's really hard to say which one is which because there's oftentimes situations where groups will try to take the credit more often statistically, more often than not. If something like this happens, a group tries to take credit um, even if they didn't actually do it. So for a group not to take credit is a little questionable to say the least, even though you would normally think, well, no, that's a perfect chance. Like they're not gonna take credit because it's gonna mess things up politically for them, but they still wanted to attack. But th that doesn't actually happen as often as one might think, believe it or not. So that's the real question. Did the Islamic State do that? Hard to say. Oftentimes also there's like random explosions that happen because of some sort of a technical fault of something that had happened. For example, there was a, an explosion once in a train station, just by example, and uh, Islamist extremist group, I believe it was Al-Qaeda taking responsibility for it, but in reality, it was a technical issue with the train. But I digress. The point being is that we still have tens of thousands of individuals who need to get out. And we have the Taliban controlling one airport, and then you have the US controlling another airport. I'm not exactly sure how the Islamic State fits into all of this. They've been a little quiet recently. Part of the reason also is because they've been essentially decimated. So if you hear reports of like different countries, like, oh, the Islamic State is in there. Well, the Islamic State essentially like doesn't exist anymore. So that's just a kind of a fun fact. But anyway, we'll see what happens. I do know also just another fun fact is that the Taliban did begin their reprisal killings. This was according to Amnesty International. So they're going house to house, trying to find everybody, laid in the smack down, down. I just reported um, yesterday about a situation where the Taliban had tortured individuals by cutting muscles off of their arms and so on and so forth. But anyway, something I'm curious about is do you support Biden's move to get everybody out of Afghanistan? Personally, I do. I do. And the reason is because of something that came out called the Afghanistan Papers. For those of you who do not know what I'm talking about, the Afghanistan Papers was a document that was leaked from the US government to the Washington Post. It was an investigation about what exactly went wrong with the war in Afghanistan. Now, what we learned about this was that we, being the United States government, lied about the amount of successes we had. We lied about the amount of people that were killed, successes being specifically like geographic control that we've had, the amount that they've pushed back um, 
Taliban fighters from these regions. And so what we learned is that the reason why the Taliban was able to take control from a lot of these different uh, small regional governances and U.S. government as well as the Afghani government was because most of the time the Taliban didn't actually leave these regions, but rather instead they hung out until the U.S. decided to withdraw and then they rose back to power, similar to what they had done in 1996. Fun fact, the Taliban had taken control in 1996 to about 2001, and that's essentially what we're seeing now. But anyway, what do you think? Do you agree with this or not? Also, let's see if your comment actually pops up on the comments section below. I don't think it will, and I don't even monitor comments or anything like that. So, food for thought.